ancient times, the secrets of the universe have often been hidden from the public. This continues in the present day with the potential to empower the average individual beyond conventional limits, being a reason why the elites of the world don't want you to discover these secrets. This wisdom is known as the invisible power, a force that, when harnessed, can lead to unprecedented success and fulfillment in your life. But what if I told you there exists a key to unlocking this hidden knowledge? What if I revealed that the path to enlightenment lies not in the corridors of power, but within the depths of your own consciousness? This is the secret the elites don't want you to discover. However, before you're ready to learn how it works, your mind needs to be prepared. Ancient wisdom teaches us that truth is often obscured by layers of illusion. It is only through diligent inquiry and introspection that we can peel back these layers and uncover the hidden truths of our existence. The sages of old spoke of a universal consciousness, a divine spark that resides within each of us, connecting us to the infinite wisdom of the cosmos. But the elites would have you believe otherwise. Behind closed doors, they orchestrate a symphony of influence, weaving webs of deception to maintain their grip on the world's societies. By keeping this knowledge to themselves, they ensure a life of great luxury and power. They keep the masses tethered to the material world, ensnared in a web of distraction and illusion. They bombard the world with advertisements and propaganda, luring populations into a state of complacency and conformity. They want the public to believe that happiness and fulfillment can be found in the accumulation of wealth and possessions, in the pursuit of power and status. This is consumerism, the biggest delusion of all. The powerful know that the endless acquisition of possessions will never satisfy anyone. It's human nature to want more. So this becomes the perfect distraction. It's a mechanism of social control, one that preoccupies the world with trivial pursuits and diverts their attention from the true sources of meaning and fulfillment in life. This relentless pursuit of material wealth distracts people from deeper existential questions and keeps them focused on superficial desires. The Roman poet Juvenal once said, bread and circuses he used it to criticize the Roman political system, suggesting that the government used cheap food and entertainment to distract and pacify the population, thus preventing them from engaging in meaningful political discourse or dissent. This has been the status quo for more than 2,000 years. The path to enlightenment begins with a shift in consciousness, a willingness to question the status quo and seek out the deeper truths that lie beneath the surface. To question the status quo requires courage and conviction. Doing this puts you against the interests of the most powerful sectors of society. Anyone would be in their right mind to feel scared of going against such a behemoth. Courage and conviction drive us to challenge the narratives that have been imposed upon us to reject the illusions of separation and division, and to embrace the interconnectedness of all beings. This is not merely an act of defiance. It is an act of liberation from social control. It is a refusal to accept the limitations and constraints that society imposes upon us, and a declaration of our inherent right to seek truth and freedom. Throughout history, the greatest minds and souls have dared to challenge the prevailing wisdom of their time, daring to ask the difficult questions that others feared to ponder. All of them questioned the status quo and were attacked by the elites because they didn't want the rest of society to find out about the secret they were hiding. From Socrates, who questioned the foundations of Athenian democracy, to Galileo, who challenged the geocentric model of the universe, to Martin Luther King Jr., 
who dare to dream of a world where all beings are judged not by the color of their skin, but by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. These individuals all faced severe consequences for their defiance. Socrates, in particular, got closer to the truth than anyone else in history. He developed a method of questioning known as the Socratic method, which involved engaging in dialogues with fellow citizens to uncover contradictions and inconsistencies in their beliefs, often exposing the ignorance of those in positions of power. You can imagine that this didn't earn him any favors from the ruling political elite of the time. His relentless pursuit of truth and his refusal to compromise his principles ended in his trial and execution by the Athenian state. They assassinated his character by accusing him of being impious and lacking reverence for the traditional gods when all he did was challenge narratives. These gods were yet another social construct, one that he questioned through his philosophical inquiries. This is the best example of the power of reason and doubt, the foundation of the power the elites don't want you to discover. Reason and doubt help us uncover underlying truths about life, morality, and the nature of reality. They prepare the human mind for mastering the secrets of the universe. But before we learn more about reason and doubt, we need to prepare our minds for it. Anyone can try to reason and doubt, but since our upbringing, we've been influenced by the system created by the elites. Even as you read this, you might feel biased toward this information precisely because the elites have made us resistant to challenging information. Only by reprogramming our brains from the brainwashing caused by those in power can our minds be freed. It is then that we can start learning how to reason and doubt without being biased by our upbringing. This Reprogramming can be achieved through neurolinguistic programming. ELF. Robert Diltz, based on the work of English anthropologist Gregory Bateson, proposed an ELFI logical levels model. The model explains how the human experience is divided into six levels, like a pyramid, with each level influencing and being influenced by the others creating a hierarchy of meaning and action. At the surface lies the environment, the tangible realm where our interactions unfold, influenced by the people, places, and circumstances that surround us. This is what the elites try to control the most, as they know this base level is the most important one and influences the rest of them. Our behavior emerges as the visible expression of our inner world reflecting the choices we make and the actions we take in response to our environment. Deeper still, within the realm of capability, reside our skills and capacities to navigate the challenges we encounter, shaping our effectiveness in the world. Systems of power coerce this realm to ensure we never develop the skills to challenge the narratives imposed by them. Beneath this realm lies the level of beliefs and values serving as guiding principles that inform our perceptions, decisions, and behaviors. At the core of our being lies identity, the essence of who we are, shaped by our experiences, relationships, and self-concept. But because the rest of the pyramid is corrupted, we never reach the final level, spirituality or purpose. Here, we find transcendence, aligning our actions with a higher calling or sense of purpose that transcends the individual self. People have their purposes manipulated because their whole environment is engineered from the get. Go to never allow them to reach transcendence, knowing how the system works. It's time for us to break free from the chains. Reason is the drive to question authority, scrutinize information, and seek evidence based answers rather than accepting dogma or tradition without question. Doubt, in turn, serves as a catalyst for growth and intellectual exploration, prompting individuals to reconsider their assumptions and beliefs in the pursuit of truth. From Descartes' famous declaration, I think therefore I am, to the existential musings of Friedrich Nietzsche, 
The exploration of doubt has been central to the pursuit of philosophy. In Eastern philosophies such as Buddhism and Taoism, the practice of questioning assumptions and transcending dualistic thinking is integral to achieving spiritual awakening. In the face of uncertainty and ambiguity, the power of reason serves as our guiding compass, helping us navigate the complexities of existence with clarity and purpose. By cultivating a healthy skepticism and a willingness to question our own assumptions, we open ourselves up to new possibilities and avenues of exploration. As the great philosopher Voltaire once said, doubt is an uncomfortable condition, but certainty is a ridiculous one. The powers that be, whether political, religious, or societal, rely on unquestioning obedience to maintain control over the masses. On the other hand, the truly enlightened recognize that doubt is not a weakness, but a strength. It is through the questioning of authority and the challenging of established norms that progress is made and new paradigms emerge. Just as the scientific method relies on skepticism and experimentation to advance our understanding of the natural world, so too must we apply the same rigor to our spiritual and philosophical inquiries. Reason and doubt empower us to break free from the constraints of dogma and ideology, opening the door to a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. Moreover, reason and doubt foster autonomy and individual agency, challenging the elite's authority and undermining their ability to manipulate and control the population. One parable that beautifully illustrates the interplay between doubt, reason, and enlightenment is the Buddhist story of the parable of the raft. This story of the parable of the raft, this story, found in the Majinya Nikaya of the Pali Canon, is often attributed to the Buddha himself. In this parable, a man traveling along a path comes to a great expanse of water. On this side of the water, the territory is dangerous and filled with suffering, but on the other side, the land is safe and hospitable. However, there is no bridge or ferry for crossing. To cross the water and reach safety, the man gathers sticks, branches, and leaves and constructs a raft. With great effort, he manages to paddle across to the other side, where he is met with safety and comfort. Upon reaching the other side, the man faces a dilemma. He thinks to himself, This raft has served me well. It has been my support across these dangerous waters. Should I now carry it with me on my back as I continue on my journey? The Buddha then asks his followers, What do you think? Should the man carry the raft with him on dry land? The disciples respond that it would not be sensible to do so. The Buddha explains that the raft is like the teachings. Dharma. They are meant to be a means to an end. Crossing over suffering. The waters. To reach enlightenment. The far shore. Once the teachings have served their purpose, they should not be clung to dogmatically or carried around unnecessarily. Instead, one should let go and move forward applying reason and understanding to the next phase of the journey. Winston Churchill once said that history is written by the winners. Thus, a society ruled by elites will always thrive in the ignorance of the masses because they control how information is distributed. They manipulate historical texts to distort human truths and promote division to prevent the rise of a more empowered society. If we never learn that our ancestors knew how to use the power of conscious manifestation, we'd never discover this power ourselves. Empowerment through conscious manifestation begins with the realization that we are not passive victims of circumstance, but active participants in the creative process of life. In the words of the American transcendentalist philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson, what lies behind us 
and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us through empowerment we unlock the latent potential within ourselves tapping into our inner wisdom creativity and resilience this is the next level of the big secret kept from you by the elites it has great potential for societal revolution should it be discovered by the public ancient wisdom traditions from around the world have long recognized the profound influence of consciousness on the fabric of reality in hindu philosophy the concept of brahman represents the universal consciousness that underlies all existence while in buddhism enlightenment is achieved through the cultivation of mindful awareness and insight into the nature of reality similarly indigenous cultures have honored the interconnectedness of all life and the importance of living in harmony with the earth and its ecosystems it is interesting how almost all spiritual systems throughout history have this technique as a common denominator among them. At its core, consciousness is the awareness of our existence and the interconnectedness of all things. It is the realization that we are not separate from the world around us, but are intimately woven into the tapestry of life. With this awareness, comes the power to consciously direct our thoughts and intentions, aligning them with our deepest values and aspirations, aligning them with our deepest values and aspirations. The practice of visualization is a powerful tool within conscious manifestation that amplifies our ability to manifest our desires. Visualization involves the deliberate and focused mental imagery of our desired outcomes, experiences, or circumstances, or circumstances. It operates on the principle that our thoughts and emotions emit energetic frequencies that resonate with similar frequencies in the universe, thereby attracting corresponding experiences into our lives. When we visualize our desires with unwavering belief and positive emotion, we emit a powerful energetic signal that draws those desires toward us. By mentally rehearsing our desired outcomes with clarity, detail, and motion, we align our subconscious mind with our conscious intentions, thereby magnetizing our desires into our reality. Great thinkers like Leonardo da Vinci and Marie Curie mastered the skill of visualization, allowing them to paint vivid descriptions of life through their inventions. Instead of merely accepting the status quo, they dared to dream of a world beyond the confines of conventional wisdom, envisioning possibilities that others could not even conceive. Through their visionary insights and relentless pursuit of knowledge, both da Vinci and Curie laid the groundwork for advancements in medicine, nuclear physics, and countless other fields, leaving an indelible mark on scientific progress and human history. What set them apart was not just their intellect or technical prowess, but their capacity to tap into the limitless reservoir of creativity and inspiration within themselves. They understood that true innovation arises, not from following established norms and conventions, but from daring to imagine the seemingly impossible and striving to bring it into reality. They had what high-level spiritualists call clarity of intent. In the vast expanse of human experience, consciousness serves as the beacon of our inner light, guiding us through the labyrinth of existence with clarity and purpose. It is the essence of our being, the source from which all thoughts, emotions, and actions arise. With consciousness comes the power to shape our reality, to manifest our deepest desires through the clarity of our intent. Clarity of intent is the bridge between our inner world and outer reality. When we cultivate a clear and focused intention, we harness the creative power of the universe to bring our desires to fruition. Like a laser beam cutting through the fog, 
Clarity illuminates the path ahead, guiding us toward our highest potential. Yet, in a world filled with distractions and noise, maintaining clarity can be challenging. The pressures of society, the demands of work and family, and the constant barrage of information can cloud our minds and obscure our true desires. It is in these moments of confusion and doubt that we must turn inward, reconnecting with the stillness and silence within. Only then can we reach the same level Socrates did. Only then can we defeat the systems of power imposed on us by the elites. Questioning the status quo is not without its risks. It requires courage and conviction to stand up against the tide of public opinion, to challenge the narratives imposed by those in power. Yet, it is through this questioning that we begin to peel back the layers of illusion and uncover the hidden truths of our existence. By embracing the power of reason and doubt, we can break free from the chains that bind us and unlock the limitless potential within. This is the secret the elites don't want you to discover. It is the invisible power that, when harnessed, can lead to unprecedented success and fulfillment in your life.